Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you, everybody. Let, like I said, their topic today is six reasons why disc golf will experience sudden and rapid growth very soon. Our overview of the presentation will begin with some basic data and information. The whole theme of what I'm trying to establish today is where our disc golf markets are, how we tap into them, and how much growth potential we really have with the sport of disc golf. And this is especially pertaining to growing new markets. So we're going to get talk about some basic data and information to start the presentation. Then I'm going to get to the six reasons why I think this basic data and information and the trends specifically in disc golf internally and externally will contribute to the sudden and rapid growth. And then to finish up today, I want to talk a little bit about bridging your brand and your business with this explosive growth that we're ready to see. The bottom line here is that I believe disc golf is a maturing industry and it's poised for business, gr business growth. And we'll talk a little bit about it. So I really believe that a great foundation has been built. But the question is, where are we going to tap into new markets? We know disc golf is very competitive on, from a business perspective. And I want to bring to you, I want to talk a little bit about this idea of, is disc golf a sport? Is it a form of recreation? What is really, you know, what is disc golf all about? So let's take a look at it from two different points of view. First of all, let's look at it as a recreational outlet. and What kind of markets we deal with with disc golf as a recreational outlet. In 2012, the Outdoor Foundation did their participation report. And they report that 142 million Americans participated in outdoor recreation. This is everything from hiking, stand-up paddle boarding, uh, any anything you do to go outside and spend some time outdoors. They estimate 142 million Americans participated in outdoor recreation. I want you to think about that number for a second because I was doing some research and I found out that the PDGA is up to about 62,000 in number. 62,000 people, uh, PDGA numbers have been given out. And if we assume that those 62,000 active PDGA members constitute just 1% of all the disc golfers out there, so we say that's 6.2 6 million or, or whatever, 6.2 million people play disc golf, which I, I think that's probably a, a, a overestimate. But the bottom line is we're really looking at about 4% of all the people who participate in outdoor recreation play disc golf. That's 4%. And I'm and these are the most, you know, these are the most uh, biggest estimates I could possibly come up with. Which means from a bottom line, if only 4% of the people who participate in outdoor recreation participate in disc golf, then we have massive room for growth within this recreational community. That's if we look at disc golf as a form of recreation. If we look at it as a sport, we see that in the 2012-2013 high school sports participation, it reached a record 7.7 .7 million students around the country. Again, and my, my data here is dealing with just Americans, so um, there's a whole Asian market, a European market that we can tap into as well, but let's just deal with America for now, just so I could prove my point. Now, the, the National Federation of State High School Associations, 7.7 .7 million students is a record for them. But when I burrowed down into these numbers, there were some interesting trends. The fact is that for boys football, girls basketball, girls softball, what I call the traditional sports, the numbers are actually declining. So there's an interesting sort of paradox where we're seeing the traditional sports, baseball, basketball, football, lose participation, yet students are participating in sports more and more in record amounts. So where's that growth coming from? Well, we're seeing it in what I call emerging sports. Uh, they have classified bowling, lacrosse, women's ice hockey. These new sports that are coming to fruition are getting more and more participation. And the bottom line is that what we're seeing is a trend essentially away from team sports and more towards individual sports like track here, for example, with these young ladies. And the other, so, so more and more emerging sports participation is happening. And secondly, more and more women are participating. 
And if, you're, if you know the disc golf industry, you know we basically have about 93 to 94% of our disc golfers are actually men. So in terms of growth and in terms of tapping into new, new markets, we have first our recreational folks out here, the 142 million people who participate. We have these new high school students that are trying different sports and different, different types of sports going away from traditional sports. And thirdly, we have women as a tremendous growth area. So we're really excited about these three areas. Let's focus in on disc golfers. Since 2005, uh, I personally have conducted what I call the disc golf survey. Um, and the, our last incarnation was in 2012. I had over 2,300 disc golfers respond to this survey online. And we found out that I have a complete overview, and if you want, if you want the full report, I'd be glad to give it to you because it's very enlightening in terms of how we do our marketing and in terms of who our disc golfers really are. The thing that uh, there's some pleasant surprises, disc golfers are educated, they're motivated, and they're independent. We all sort of know this sort of from, you know, anecdotally, but the fact is when we actually measure it, here's what we find. If you look at this part of this pie graph, we find out that about 55% of our disc golfers have a bachelor's degree or higher. So we are educated folks. We're smart, and, you know, and we really need to tap into that. The next thing about our disc golfers are we are motivated. We find that about 40% uh, actually more than 40% here, about 55% of our disc golfers make over $50,000 a year. And that's pretty impressive because I think the sort of the stereotype of the disc golfer is the hangout dude who goes to play Frisbee on the beach with his dog or whatever. But we find out that these folks, our disc golfers, are, are motivated folks. 55% make over $50,000 a year. And if you think about over 75 thousand dollars a year we have what 29 34 percent of our disc golfers make over seventy five thousand dollars a year so that's one in every three disc golfers are making pretty good money which leads to disposable income which leads to them buying discs from your brand or your your business what do these disc golfers do off the course well i have a whole bunch of things that we measured but here's just an example um, we 10 percent speak spanish we have one in every three invest in the stock market um, over half of our disc golfers have kids. We see over half are dog owners. And we see a large portion, 61%, go camping. Again, that reinforces this idea of disc golf as a recreational outlet if our folks go camping as well. So they're not just playing disc golf. They're participating in all forms of recreation. So that's pretty exciting. And then we see that one about every one in four travel for business. So these are people on the go. They're independent they're motivated, and they're educated. So we have a great demographic here to tap into with our disc golfers. So that sort of lays the groundwork. That's sort of the raw data I wanted to present to you and give you an idea of who these people are, where we can find them, and what appeals to them. They're smart, they're independent, and they're motivated. So why do I believe that disc golf is ready for this rapid expansion? When I started disc golf, and, and some of you have been around long enough, um, you, you'll know that disc golf was described by our founder, Ed Hedrick, as the sport of the future. And it was a great moniker back in the 70s when he started disc golf because, frankly, you know, it, it was the sport of the future. It was new. We were playing with the Frisbee. Everybody had a Frisbee. As a footnote, you should know there are more Frisbees sold in the world than baseballs, basketballs, and soccer balls combined. So it is the most popular piece of sporting equipment around the planet, which is really exciting. So how do these people use them? Well, they do, they've do. they discovered disc golf. And when Ed Hedrick called disc golf the sport of the future, it was a double-edged sword because it said we have some great potential down the road. But the fact is that the future is like that carrot that dangles out in front of us. We never can quite reach it. Well, I'm here to tell you today that disc golf, for disc golf, the future is now. We have been five decades of growth since the 1970s. Disc golf has grown from a grassroots sport. We've developed businesses, we've developed courses, and we've developed an industry now that is primed for this massive growth. And here's the six reasons why I believe this is so. First of all, there are external factors, there are internal factors, 
And then there's a combination of both. So let me just review the six reasons why real quick, and I'll talk about them specifically as we move forward. The external factors really are twofold. I believe there's lifestyle changes that we've undergone. How many people tell you they're busy? Everybody's busy, busy, busy. We're almost sick of hearing that. But the good news is that disc golf fits into that busy lifestyle. It doesn't cost much to play. You can play 18 holes in about two hours. So it really fits into today's lifestyle. The second reason is this, this external factor of sports participation. Like I've mentioned already, the research is showing that traditional sports are losing players. Baseball, basketball, and football are losing players. And even more importantly, I think psychologically, uh, the, 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 the sports are getting, people are getting cynical about it because if there's more TV, we, we know money drives pro sports, we see the scandals with these pro athletes, they just go on and on and on. And people are really getting cynical about the traditional sports, which is leading them to think in different ways. And what else can I do besides play basketball, baseball, or football? So they're finding these alternative sports like disc golf to participate in. Some of the internal factors, and this is really where I believe the, the biggest part, you know, the, the, um, I give disc golf, the leaders of disc golf, a lot of credit because these internal factors Nothing would be possible. The growth I'm talking about would not be possible without these internal factors. The first is this ability to collaborate. Um, disc golf leaders have been working with like-minded sports organizations and events, and we'll talk about that in a minute. We're looking outside of the disc golf universe to find you know, people to partner with and businesses to partner with. Um, we're also a maturing industry. For five decades, you know, disc golf, like I said, we've gone from like just the disc craft and the innovas of the world there are 73 different disc golf manufacturers right now, as well as different online vendors. And not only are we growing in terms of numbers, but in terms of the quality of our operations, supply chain operations are improving, meaning we're getting product to market in a faster way, in a more efficient way, in a more cost-effective way, and in a more widespread way, which is helping our industry mature greatly. And the third thing from internally, we have some great personalities emerging in disc golf. And it used to be that Ken Climo, who could beat Ken Climo? He dominated the scene for how long? I mean, most incredible disc golfer of all time. But we're seeing parity now, and we're seeing these great personalities emerge, which is leading to rooting interest in more dramatic uh, things on the course as they happen. The sixth, and what I really believe is the most important reason and why, you know, why I'm so excited about the growth of disc golf is that we're seeing great media is emerging. Um, we're, we're seeing... Uh, the businesses themselves internally they were tapping into a bunch of different robust media outlets these external factors that are available to promote our brands and our businesses and we'll talk about that in a minute externally I mentioned lifestyles change with disc golf fits into a modern lifestyle no secret there we know that we're out there playing we see more and more people playing but not just you know people from all walks of life are playing families are playing lawyers are playing Homeless people are playing. I mean, we get them all in disc golf. There's no doubt about it. And this idea of traditional sports experiencing the decline, I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. So those are the external factors that are happening. Internally, our disc golf leaders are collaborating. Who are they collaborating with? We're collaborating with other sports. Uh, Ultimate, beach volleyball, jet ski racing. These are some of the, these, the beach volleyball and the jet ski racing. They're the ones that are happening on the beach sports network. Uh, who we pr produce our TV shows. We're also getting involved with, you know, mountain biking and, and really, and not just the sports, but the organizations. For example, the Convention and Visitors Bureaus. Um, I've been to conferences where the rights holders are invited to present, you know, their, their bids for different events. These guys are fumbling over each other. I mean, Jeremy, Jeremy Rusco and I, we've worked with our Emporia Convention and Visitors Bureaus. I've worked with the Convention and Visitors Bureaus in uh, Fountain Hills, Rock Hill, South Carolina, Allentown, Pennsylvania, all over the country. And these organizations are very interested in our sports, and they're helping us leverage our sport to broader audiences. And, of course, the events. You know, we, we're, we're collaborating with music festivals. We're collaborating with uh, other sports, Ultimate, for example. Um, WIFDIF is now talking about doing overall events. So really, really neat stuff in terms of our collaborations, not just about disc golf anymore. We're, we're opening, we're broadening our horizons. The industry is maturing. It's gaining in critical mass. I use disc, I use uh, disc 
uh, our disc golf manufacturers as an example here, Innova. Um, Innova fills a UPS truck once every two weeks, sends it up to Coriopolis, Pennsylvania, which is where Dick's Sporting Goods is located, and they dump off a bunch of discs for the discs uh, for Dick's Sporting Goods to, to distribute around the country. Um, you know, Jeremy Rusco, who is on this call right now, he's been doing amazing stuff down in Emporia and in, in, in Texas and in Kansas City where his shops are located. We're getting, to, getting product, getting inventory to these markets, distributing them, creating customized discs. And it's not just happening in these storefronts, it's happening online as well. So our supply chain operations are really getting worked out. And that gets our products to market much quicker and to a much wider audience. And then finally, our individual stars are beginning to emerge. Here's Will Schustrick and Avery Jenkins. I mean, Avery is a social media darling. He really knows how to, you know, how to communicate with his fans. Um, Will Schustrick, you know, one of the top golfers, of course, in our, in, our, in our era. And what's happening is with this parody in disc golf, these people are competing at, competing at levels we can't even imagine. So it's, it, but it's not just about the players. It's not just the Macbeth versus the Schustrick or, or the Wysocki versus the Avery Jenkins or the Nate Doss versus Dave Feldbergs anymore. We're talking about manufacturers are now competing. We know the Prodigy Innova uh, dynamic that's going on. We know that um, with, with the different targets that are coming out, you know, Disc Golf Association has more competition than ever. So there's rivalries that are be creating, and it's a very dramatic time in our sport. I like that transition. The thing is, with those five factors in mind, it still doesn't answer where all this growth is coming from and how are we going to tap into this growth? How are we going to harness this growth? Well, of course, being in Disc Golf Planet uh, TV, my, uh, my opinions are a little bit biased, but I think it's the truth. I believe great media will open up these new markets. If we're just doing random doubles on a Thursday or if we're running a C tier on a Saturday, you know, we really have a finite a number of people that we can appeal to. But the fact is that with YouTube, with our live streaming, with our TV production, as well as social media, press releases, all these different things that happen, we are able to tap into new and emerging markets out there and let them know that there's this great story about disc golf that needs to be told. So that's where I believe the real growth is going to be coming from. And the, the truth is, that it's really going to be incumbent upon your disc golf businesses to find a way to tap into these markets. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to find a way to bridge your brand or your business with these new markets. And I'm happy to say that I, I believe the holy grail of this is finding those non-PDGA, non-tournament playing disc golfers. That's really the holy grail because According to my calculations, they really constitute 98 to 99 percent of all disc golfers. So how do we tap into those folks? We have challenges. For your business, competition is fierce right now. There are 73 manufacturers, like I said. That doesn't even include half the apparel manufacturers are starting to emerge. And countless vendors. So you're, you really have your work cut out for you. How do you tap into these people? How do you stay competitive? How do you get the word out? We're going to talk about that in a moment. For the disc golf consumer, now think about it from the user's perspective. You type in disc golf to a, a Google search, and what happens? You get how many pages of results? You get tens of thousands of results, whether it's someone who has a sale on, on AVR putters, whether it's disc golf course directory, whether it's lessons on how to play the sport. My gosh, for the, from, the, from the marketplace, and I'm, I'm sorry, this, this is a repetitive thing here, but the fact is that the marketplace is really confusing for consumers. They, they really have a lot of, almost too many options. Well, I'm happy to tell you that from Disc Golf Planet TV's perspective, we have in the past, and we will even more so in the future, be able to bridge your brand with those hardest-to-reach disc golfers in a clear, concise, and focused way. We're going to focus in on what your message is, and we're going to focus in on who these customers are so we can, we can really help you. So the question is, what is the secret sauce? What is this thing? Okay, we have all this stuff happening. We know there's a lot of great energy in disc golf. You know, but where do we go with it? How do we, how do we really tap into this? Well, the secret gang is this multi-platform media operation that we're evolving, and this is a big year for us. 
Most of you know that Disc Golf Planet TV is a live streaming company, and we're looking forward to doing our fifth year of live streaming. Right now, we're the only live disc golf producer in the sport, and we take that responsibility very seriously. But we also take, and, and really our mission is not just to, to stream live disc golf, but to prop up the entire industry so brands and businesses like yours can benefit from the work we're doing. And, and more than a few of you on this call we have partnered with me in the past, and, and I'm looking forward to a great, a great future. But the good news is that we do way more than live streaming now, and I want to tell that story real briefly. Disc Golf Planet, we do our live Internet streaming, and who do we tap into? We have 35 to 50,000 unique viewers per show in 100 to 143 nations. It's incredible. We really do have a global reach. And when I go through the log files and see that Afghanistan's watching, which is probably military folks over in Afghanistan, we're, we're getting viewers in China, we're getting viewers in all parts of the world, absolutely incredible viewership. So we really are tapping into that non-PDGA, non-tournament playing disc golfer, just with our live streaming alone. This year, we're going to continue our television broadcasting efforts with the Beach Sports Network, and this is a beach volleyball group, a jet ski group, and with the PDGA uh, leading the charge, we're producing four more shows this year for the Beach Sports Network. We're going to reach 60 to 80 million households across 24 regional sports affiliates. Absolutely unprecedented in our sport. So whatever your message is, whatever you're trying to sell, whoever you're trying to attract, we have unprecedented reach with our TV shows. And this is the most powerful uh, this is the biggest audience ever in the history of disc golf, and we're proud to be a part of that. We also have the press releases. So these are sort of the broadcast elements, these top two. But there are other ways to distribute our message as well and help you distribute yours. We, we have a service called PR Web. PR Web is a press release tool that gets us to 6,500 news outlets around the country and around the world, reaching 60,000 impressions per press release. So think about it. You have an event coming up, a big event, or you have a product you want to release, or you have a player that you're sponsoring. We have, a, we, we have the ability to create a press release for that and tell the world about it. Not just the disc golf world, but again, this non-disc golf you know, market out here who, who may know a little bit about it but that aren't involved yet, we're reaching those people. Social media. We have 7,500 Facebook likes, and we're going to get over 10,000 this year. We're going to get to over 10,000, 2,000 Twitter followers, 500,000 YouTube views, and wow, that's pretty good for social media. I'm going to tell you, though, my own personal perspective on social media is you have to have it, but it is not a secret recipe. It's not the be-all, end-all in terms of promoting your business. It gets your brand out there, but does it really convert customers? I mean, we can have contests, and a lot of people think that just growing your number of likes is, you know, that's their goal. But our goal really is to convert these likes into customers, isn't it? As a business or a brand, you know, you gotta, you got to find a way to turn these viewers and these like and these followers into customers, and we have a way to do that. We know how to do that. We have an opt-in email list. We have over 13,000 opt-in emails that are disc golf specific. Um, they're from our Disc Golf Planet membership, and we've been doing we've been doing this for so many years that again, thirteen thousand. And this opt-in email list is powerful. We I'll give you an example. When we broadcast on Disc Golf Planet TV, we send an email out to let them know we're on the air. Within fifteen minutes, our viewership explodes. We're getting Disc Golf Planet TV lifetime memberships through the door, and we're converting these email uh, this email list into customers and into active participants and, and into into dollars and cents. I'm going to just be, I'm going to be blunt about it. So by partnering with Disc Golf Planet with your brand, uh, we can we can fast track your sales. If you have a disc on sale or an event you want people to register for, boom. Emailing should not be underestimated because it is a powerful force. And then finally, more traditional on-site event marketing, the events we go to, we can interview you on the air, we can you know, product placement and banners, and uh, we can we can let people know about your brand. The question is, how does Disc Golf Planet going to do this? I mean, I can't do this all myself. 
And so I, I have built, and I'm really so happy that this year I finally am getting, <laughs> I finally am getting some help. But I'm going to unmute everybody so we can go through this. But I want to, I'm th thank you all so much for your patience here. But I want to introduce a couple of the team members here. Um, I, I am, my name's John Diesel, like I said, and I am the, uh, I'm the principal of. I'm going to mute just a couple people here. Just stick with me, gang. You guys can still see my screen, yes? Yep. Yeah, good. Okay, thank you. So let me just, uh, I want to get, I want to introduce you to, this is uh, this is Dara uh, padwell Audic, who is from down in Virginia. And uh, Dara is a, our media strategist, and she really is going to help us talk about not just, you know, what we do, but how we do it, and how we can tell a good story. So I'm going to I'm going to pass Dara on to you for just two minutes. I want to introduce you to her. And Dara, would you tell us a little bit about what your role is going to be with Disc Golf Plan and really with Terra Firma Media, our our parent company? Hi guys. Um, so my background actually is in a combination of marketing, advertising, and broadcast television. I've been doing broadcast television for ESPN and CBS and the larger networks for about 30 years as an executive producer and also building brand awareness for different sports and properties. So I'm excited about disc golf as an emerging sport. And in the last two years, it, with my involvement in sort of alternative sports, I'm realizing that the trend is moving more towards individuals and that the opportunity here really is for us to reach out and build this brand, as John says, with the non-association uh, members. And so my role is going to be to try to figure out how to do that in a way that maximizes your exposure, but also builds the brand awareness in a broader way so that you build more of a legacy and a following over time. That's great. That's summary. Thank you. Thank you, Dara. Um, we're, we're excited about that. We'll, we'll hear more from Dara as we, as we all move forward um, throughout the season. Um, secondly, um, I have I've been had the good fortune of um, having Rebecca Duffy, um, who is our, our social media queen. Rebecca, you might know from our broadcast, but we're going to put Rebecca to work um, as our communications director. And uh, Rebecca, are you with us? Rebecca might not be with us. She's actually attending. Her dad is not is uh, she's with her dad right now, who is in the hospital. So I, unfortunately, she is not with us. But Rebecca will be handling both our social media and some of our public relations work. So um, we have help with her. And the third person I'd like to introduce is is Bobby Taylor. Bobby is um, Bobby is really very excited. He he is a, a web developer. And uh, I have some ideas with Bobby, but Bobby, are you with us? I am. Great. I am. Bobby, tell us a little bit about what your mission is going to be. And I'm, I'm happy to call Bobby a, ta a partner here with Disc Golf Planet as we really focus a lot of our efforts, not just in terms of our media efforts, but in terms of helping you vendors expand your market role. Bobby, tell us a little bit about what you're, you're up to. All right. Well, like John said, um my name is Bobby, and I come to the table with 13 years' experience owning and operating an online web development and marketing company. Uh, I fell in love with disc golf about two years ago and uh, have been watching it grow in my area at a tremendous rate. And I saw along the line that there was a lot of people asking about disc golf apparel, and we were going to tournaments, and, and we noticed that so many people had the same gear on and things of that nature. So a few of my buddies had some, some ideas for some T-shirts, and with with my background in design and things of that nature, I decided, you know what, I'll design a few things, get some feedback on it, and everybody loved it, and it sold out. So very quickly, I got the idea to develop a website around this. Uh, during that process, and amongst all the people that I spoke to, I realized there was more opportunity than just having another disc golf apparel site out there, that this was an opportunity with a good, solid, brandable name like Kaisers.com, to open the door for anybody and everybody within disc golf to have their own storefront. Um, some some people may have a storefront already. Uh, they, they want the additional exposure and just the additional placement of their products. That's always an option. Uh, anybody that didn't have a storefront and was kind of going off of the social um, media to try to sell their products, we gave them a door to do so. We brought in people such as um, Cam Todd and 
and Chuck from Spike Heiser and uh, recently uh, Skeet. And so we, we, the lineup's there. Everybody's really excited about it. And, and the overall goal was basically to build something that was there for one central location on the consumer side and, and vendors to have an opportunity on every level, no matter how big or small you are, all the way down to clubs. Um, we, we, I noticed there was a lot of clubs who, you know, bought X amount of discs for a fundraiser tournament, and they had 23 left over. Um, and that's club funds and, and fundraiser money they were trying to work with. So I wanted to open up an outlet for them to be able to get rid of those as well, because there's collectors for that. And so a central hub is the general idea. Uh, as well as being able to open the door to anybody and everybody. And if you don't have the experience to maybe perhaps um, start your own business, then that's something that we can help you do as well and, and get your products out there without having a headache and the overhead of the processing. And, you know, it's, a, it's an expensive process to develop a site of this nature. And, and fortunately, I have the means of doing so since I already have the team in-house to do it. Um, that's great. So that's... That's pretty much it in a nutshell. I mean, I could break down a million different facts, but again, like John said, uh, we recently started talking about some ideas of how we could um, expand the exposure for all vendors as well as disc golf itself. And so between some conversations that you and I will still have, um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited on multitude of levels about Heisers.com and, and the growth of the sport in general, which is my main objective. That's great, Bobby. Thank you so much. And I, I'm here to tell you that um, the, the, one of the things I'm excited about with Bobby is that having this this unifying force and really creating sort of a vendors association where, you know, not everybody's going to be part of it, but the disc golf leaders are going to be part of this. And it's a way that we unify our forces. We, we talk about, we'll talk about operations. We'll share some of our things. And as much as, as much as we're in competition with each other, um, you know, I think it's a great way to, to leverage our, our presence here in the industry with, with getting the vendors together. Um, I want to just say real quick that our Disc Golf Planet team, this is sort of our, you know, strategic team, but we have, we have on the production side, we have a lot of great people that we work with as well. And I'm not sure if Crazy John is on the line. Are you, are you on the line, Crazy? Not, not. Crazy, good. Hello, um, I, on the air. Thank you, sir. I just want to introduce Crazy John Brooks real quick. John, Crazy John has been the face of Disc Golf Planet for the last three years, or four years, I should say. And uh, Crazy, I, I want you to just, if you wouldn't mind, you know, um, just in a thumbnail, tell us a little, tell us a little bit about some of this, uh, the possibilities that you, um, that you think that Disc Golf Planet has the opportunity to help with disc golf and uh, some of what, what excites you about what we do. Uh, thank you, John. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. And thanks, John, for putting this group together. First of all, it's uh, compelling to know that there are other people equally as interested and, and passionate and compassionate about our sport. It's kind of like we got the whole thing in the palm of your hand and you put the right people together. So thanks to those of you that have joined in as well. Uh, you know, off the top, I've had a recurring uh, kind of a fulfillment that Disc Golf Planet has given me, and I think we can possibly all share this, is that we have this inner need and desire for disc golf and, and flying disc sports in general, in my, in my case, to succeed no matter what the effort is required. I've taken it personally. Uh, I feel really lucky to, to have an outlet such as Disc Golf Planet and others. The PDGA is very uh, cooperative in, in a number of fashions to keep me involved, to let me be close to the heartbeat of the, the game, the family, the people, the, the activity that I like so much. It's number one in my life. So, again, um, I think it's important to remember that that power will always be in numbers, I think. I would say when we work together, our byproduct is always going to be <clears throat> a more outstanding result. Working individually is fun, but I would consider that for people to to classify as their developmental stage because not until you get on a fast moving train are you going to cover a lot of ground and now uh, we have been steadily trying to develop this train so to speak as well as building tracks and shoveling coal in to keep the disc golf planet train going 
and thanks to the blessings of our dear supporters, I feel we are still steadily moving forward. So it excites me to hear the talk about developing a, a retail uh, awareness through the uh, I'd rather consider this golf planet more of a network because that's how we're beginning to realize that we have to think. We have to cover all the bases because there's only one. We can't just go back to CBS and say our program needs this. We're, we're the CBS, we're the program, we're the writers, the producers, the camera people, all the way down to the show producers and executive producers. So uh, what uh, John and his critics have developed in this golf planet and terra firma is a real standalone turnkey operation that is showing signs of success in that our product has been getting sharper. And that's what I feel proudest of is I'm working alongside people who are constantly improving their personal output, their personal performance, their selves, and we're having a lot of fun doing it. And that is very easy to keep doing. You know, when it's fun, you'll want to do it. We all want to pick a, an area of specialization that we have a lot of fun and hope we can get paid for it. That's, that's what life is. There you go. So that's what we're shooting for is uh, we're developing a much bigger, much more integral, more professional platform to enable people to advertise, to cook, promote, and to piggyback. And that's a lot of fun. We can we can definitely garner some energy now, and I, I pride being able to deliver for everybody, no matter what the need. So uh, Thank you. That's why I feel like the growth is, as you say, right on the tip of our of our um, – our things to do list. Thank you, Crazy, and, and I, I really appreciate it. And Crazy, your energy is unbelievable, and it, it, it carries me through a lot of this. So thank you so much for your for your input. I, I just want to finish up real quick because um, with, with the with the business part of it, I want to I want to just get right to the the dollars and cents here. Let's let's just talk about it. So so the question is how you know how do you get involved, and how can you help Disc Golf? How can Disc Golf Planet help you get to this point? So let's talk a little bit about that. There are basically three levels, and we've tried to develop a program for each one of the, each one of your levels. And this is really just sort of a starting point. Um, and we'll talk about what your needs are just in a minute here. But I basically have three levels for the season. I have the first tee, the make the turn, and the putt for dough level. Um, essentially, for as little as five hundred dollars for the entire season, and there's limited availability. We'll get you in the vendor directory. We'll promote you through our emails, through our social media, and we will also recognize you on our live internet broadcasts. And this is in the form of, you know, we're we're, we're happy to we're happy to bring, uh, you know, whoever the whoever the vendor is going to be. It's going to you know our friends from New Hampshire or or or, or uh, whoever that might be, UB Disc Golf or whoever it is. The, the second one is the intermediate level. It's $1,000. We have six available there. You get a specific listing in the broad, and this is on the TV show. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a, a plate. We're going to have two times during our, our, our broadcasts on the TV where we say if you're interested in disc golf, you can visit these local vendors. And what we'll do is we'll post three of those vendors on the screen with your phone number, your, your uh, website address, and your name of your company. And you'll be listed for for 15 seconds in front of these, you know, 60 to 80 million households, potential households, as a company that they can go to and buy disc golf equipment. Um, that's going to be a huge thing for for just a thousand dollars. We're also going to be able to list. We're, we're doing a monthly product review. Uh, you see it a lot in magazines where they feature a product every so often. Um, on the website, we're going to have three products included each month. And your, one of your products, you can do it three times a year if you have a new product or service you want to feature. Um, we also, this is where the Heisers.com commerce site will come in. We'll work with Bobby and we'll get you included. We'll, we'll put you in the shopping cart so you can sell one of your items or, or, or a couple of your items on the site. And, of course, we'll mention you as, an, uh, as a sponsor on our live Internet broadcast as well. For $5,000, there's three spots available only. You're going to get a 30-second commercial on the Beach Sports Network TV shows. Um, you'll have to produce them yourselves, but, again, we're reaching 60 to 80 million households. That same commercial will be broadcast on the live broadcasts. We'll give you three press releases. So if you have a new product, you're sponsoring a new player, or an event you want us to find out to get the word out, we'll give you that service with three press releases. 
And then if you're in the audience during our live internet broadcasts, we'll put you on this set and we'll interview you as well. So anyway, we could talk about that and I plan on following up with everybody as we as